Grace and peace. I'm Reverend Brian Musser, the Baptist Campus Minister at Drexel University. And this is Peace and Power Bible Study, the peace of Jesus Christ to change your life, the power of God to change the world around you. And we're looking at the good news, the gospel. The gospel is good news for every person and every part of life. And as we've been looking at this, we've been talking about every part of life and really evaluating life through these five question areas. Most young adults are asking questions in these five areas, and I would say not just young adults, but all people ask questions about relationships, lifestyle, purpose, belonging, and beliefs. And this week in the previous two videos and in this one, we've been evaluating how the gospel directly intersects with relationships. And as we were talking in the first video, we talked about how many different conversations, how many different questions deal with relationships. How many conversations do you have with people throughout a normal week about relationships? And it's interesting to look how this dovetails with what we see dealing with folks coming to Christ, folks journeying on their way to Christ. Most, most, for most, for many, the first step towards Jesus is forming a trusting relationship with a Christian. And as we've looked at the story, as we've looked at the Christian story, the story of the gospel, and realized how relational that story actually is, how God is relational, and how the gospel is intimately about relationships, it makes sense that it is easier to communicate to others. It's easier for others to understand it and to get it if it is communicated to them through a trusting relationship. That just makes sense. How do we communicate the gospel, the truth of the gospel, the story of the gospel, the impact of the gospel to others through relationships? Relationships are a key here. It's it's easier to understand a loving God from people who actually treat you well and relate to you with respect and integrity, honesty, trustworthiness. It's easier to understand what it means for your sins to be forgiven and for a relationship to be reconciled through a relationship that is actually able to forgive wrongs, through a relationship that is okay to admit to failures. Communicating the gospel through a relationship helps people, helps everybody understand what the gospel is. It's just easier to communicate it that way. Now, as we're in these conversations and as things are going up, we tell stories. Most relationships are developed through conversations and most conversations involve us telling stories about one thing or another happening in our lives. How many of your relationship stories do you tell? How do you describe your life through relationships? A lot of people are asking questions about relationships. How do you talk about your relationships in your life? And more importantly, how do you communicate the gospel through your stories about relationships? Is there an interesting story about your life that you can share in, in an everyday conversation that could be related to one or more parts of the gospel? We talk about ourselves a lot. We tell stories about our lives a lot. This is normal conversation to talk about what is going on in our lives and how our lives are working. And quite often our lives are so relational that the stories we tell are also relational. Pay attention to the relationship stories you tell. And is there a way that you can incorporate the gospel into those relationships? The gospel 
affects how we relate to others. So our relationship stories should probably have some gospel elements to them. For example, let me show you what I mean by this by telling a story about my life. So I was dating this girl. Let's call her Jennifer, just for the sake of having a name. And we were had been dating for a year, and I thought she was the one. I thought she was the love of my life, and I thought she was the one God gave me for the rest of my life. Things happen. I end up in Mexico for about four months on a missions trip. And you know how they say absence makes the heart grow fonder? Well, Jennifer grew fond of my absence. And when I came back from the mission trip, she broke up with me. All tons of emotions were happening in that moment. I was angry. I was heartbroken. I was confused. I even had some questions for God that didn't seem to be able to be answered. I didn't know what was going on. And I was mad at Jennifer. So, a month or two goes by, we start talking again. And she realizes that she might have made a mistake. And she might want to start dating me again. And I was sitting there, and I remember this intimately in my head. Like, in order for me to date her, I would have to forgive her for how she hurt me. And the next thought in my head was, she doesn't deserve to be forgiven. She didn't earn that forgiveness. And then all of a sudden, God just pops in there and is like, duh, forgiveness can't be earned. That's why it's forgiveness. And even though this conversation was happening in my head, that was a moment where I actually realized what forgiveness was. Forgiveness was when someone chose to let go of a past hurt, even if the other person didn't deserve it. They just chose to forgive them. And I had to let go of some of my pain in order to forgive. Jennifer. Now, the, the next thought that came through my head was, what if she hurts me again? What if I'm just setting myself up for more pain? There is no guarantee that she, if she's forgiven this time, she won't hurt me again. And that's how relationships work. And that's how forgiveness works. And that moment, that relationship probably taught me more about the forgiveness of God over my sins and taught me more about what Jesus did on the cross to forgive me than any sermon I've ever heard. Through the context of that relationship, I understood what forgiveness was. Now, that's a story I share about my life. It's a relational story. It's a story that's kind of easy to tell. And I bring it up quite a bit. And it's easy to actually communicate the gospel through that story of my life in conversations here and there. And depending on how deep it goes, it depends how explicit I get with the gospel connections I make in that story. But that's a story that people like listening to. That's a story that I kind of enjoy telling. And it's a story that opens the path up to communicate the gospel in a relationship through a relationship question that is just makes it easy to talk about what I believe. So looking at that, with that in mind, I am going to give you some homework. As always, each week, this first one will be the same. Practice saying the gospel. Write it down. Repeat it back to yourself. Explain it to someone else. Then think through stories of your life and see if there is a story about relationships that can connect to the gospel. Think through some of the big stories in your life and is there any way you can be telling a story of your life that actually has a gospel connection point to it? And then in preparation for next week, next week we're going to be looking at lifestyle. 
what is the good life? Define the good life. What should be the type of life we want to live? As always, there's two ways to join us in these conversations live Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time via Zoom or these week, weekly wrap ups on YouTube and WordPress. And I'm all over social media, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, WordPress, YouTube. All those links are in the description below.